Ryan Garland, how are you, sir? Yeah, very good, Jenny. You're very experienced in European football, both Champions League and Europa League, Garth. So this is probably more the same and in terms of like the routine and the prep for a game like this, even though we are in the middle of a global virus, it's probably quite similar to what you've been used to in recent years. Yeah, it's very similar in um, the travel, traveling two days before and all our setup, our food, times we do meetings, all our you know meals, everything like that. Um, the only difference is, I suppose, is we're stuck in hotels and you're stuck in rooms by yourself. Um, I don't know if people realize, I suppose, the way we travel now during COVID is that we're, it's a plane and it's very minimum the numbers we bring, so um, it's only ourselves on the plane and then. Onto a, we're all tested, and so it's the bus driver and that. We're onto a bus into a hotel. We have our own floor or two on the hotel. You've got a room each. Um, you sort of usually we partner about cities and stuff like that. And all the years gone by, you you can't leave the hotel. You can't mix down in areas where the other people are really. Um, so we're just sticking to ourselves, and you're in your own room a lot of the time. And uh, a few sort of corridors, just sitting on the ground chatting last night. You know, late. Um, so it's it's a bit different that way. And uh, when the Wi-Fi is not too great or it's a bit sporadic it can make it a I suppose the day or the time pass a bit longer but um, you know the minimal problems sort of thing so business as usual Yeah myself and Garth have been trying to connect to Zoom for about 15 minutes and uh, the lads can't even get their Xboxes and Playstations working in the hotel so thankfully touch wood the Zoom is working fine so far Brian earlier on I spoke to the interim manager Filippo Giovanioli um He's had three games in charge. One game in the FAI Cup is opening game against Cove, that league game against Shelburne when a ridiculous penalty was given against you and then the European game last week. Um, three wins and he certainly speaks very well. You can definitely see little changes in how the team are trying to play. How have you found him and the assistant Giuseppe Rossi? And it's the first time in your time at the dock that either Stephen Kenny or Vinnie Pert haven't been involved. Yeah, obviously it's completely different. It's aliens, I suppose, you know, having any other sort of format or... Um, way of doing things but as I said when Filippo and Giuseppe came in is that like you know the confident organised structure and you can see that in how he talks and that's how he approached us the first day he didn't come in and observe he just came in addressed the team said this is what we're going to do that's you know and when someone has that sort of confidence or speaks well like that it just comes across you know to, to, uh, to the players and to the team well and it's a good start um, great first impressions and it's been like that the whole time he's he's quite easy going uh, he knows what he wants and like I said it's, there's different ways of playing and different things and so training's been completely different to what we're used to before and there's been a lot of tactical stuff and uh, so specific to you know the games that are coming up that week and um, a lot of tactical stuff so um, it's been it's been different you know with different scores you know uh, a lot of us I suppose we're in our comfort zone and used to the same way there's no harm in learning new ways new environments and, and new ways of doing things yeah and speaking of match prep Brian you're in Moldova to play Sheriff I was just looking online there and if the websites can be trusted they've won their National League title 18 years yes 18 years in a row which is an incredible stat really what can you guys expect from them and again when League of Ireland fans and the Dock fans see on paper the Dock against a team from Moldova they go Asher the Dock have to win that match but clearly that's not the way it always works out. You saw even last week in Andorra, a 1-0 victory, the red card aside, things were quite tight. So what do you expect from the game tomorrow? Yeah, um, you summed it up there. It's it's not a Moldovan team from, you know, a typical Moldovan team in the league there. Um, they dominate the league here. It's like, I suppose, when you see Shakhtar Donetsk and teams like that, they're trying to replicate that. They have massive amounts of money here. They've got three stadiums for the one team. Um, beautiful stadium you know, maybe just a bit bigger than, I suppose, a bit bigger than Tallow with the four sides and structures all closed in. Um, that's where we'll be playing, I think. Then they have a stadium right beside it with um, two or three stands around the big running track and then they have a big indoor stadium um, as well as other training pitches with no seats at it. The ho a hotel at the ground for the players. And stuff like that. Someone said it's cost about 200 million over here, which I suppose would be probably about a billion at home. That's why we... That's why we uh, charge things, cost things, you know. And um, so they try to bring in players. They have players from all over the world. Um, a lot of African players, I think it's a couple of South American, and all over Europe and that sort of thing. So they, they, they obviously um, put a lot of money, a lot of funds behind it. So it's not your typical Moldovan. And, you know, they've been on the verge of the group stage of Champions League a couple of times with playoffs and stuff like that. 
so that's obviously what I'm striving for. And uh, it's a big task for us. But as you saw, like we were the favourites last week going into that game with Andorra. And the games like this, especially with the one-off toys, anything can happen. You've got to keep the toy alive, keep it tight, uh, get a bounce of a ball your way, a decision your way, and like that. And, you know, you're into the playoff for the for Europa League. Yeah, you mentioned earlier on about yourself and, and maybe the players being in a little bit of, you know, a zone of comfort in previous years and, and just because you were so used to the staff and, and the manager and then when Vinny took over as well. In the couple of games that Filippo has been in charge, for example, Sean Gannon, who was injured but hasn't started any of them, I'd say he might start tomorrow given that there's a suspension for Andy Boyle. He decided to give Aaron McCary a go in the Shells game and brought Gary Rogers back in for the European game last week. And he doesn't know the players, I'm sure he's been able to research online, but he's been able to see you guys for the last three weeks and he's picking the best 11 that he feels will help win in games, no matter what type of reputation those players might have in this league, which I'm sure is an interesting one for you guys, but also adds a little bit of spice to training and everybody's really trying to compete to play in, for example, this game tomorrow and then the last five or six league games with the cup to go as well. Yeah, um, I suppose, like we were saying, we got a bit... Uh, I suppose we are comfortable in our ways and you know, there's strength to that because, you know, routine and habit, you know, breed success if you're doing the, the right things and, and the right way. Um, but yeah, it's a clean safe for everyone. You know, we've got a manager that comes in and no preconceived conceptions, um, sorry, perceptions of, of, of any player or anything like that. Um, so everyone has a clean slate. Uh, players that, you know, like myself, and what I felt, you know, you could predict the team and it didn't matter what you're doing training before and um, you know people had their mind made up when you weren't getting a fair crack at a whip you know have, have a clean slate and the thing is the competition here is that if, if you're not doing well you'll be out and someone else is in um, so yeah it's given us all a little kick up the arse to say um, because you need to, to impress and you've got again like I said a tactical manager that will put in different players in different situations and uh, against different teams uh, you know, there's different needs sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it sparked a bit of life into us like that and competitiveness and training and maybe a few lads that would have been comfortable as well, you know, now have to uh, make sure that they're at the highest level and not just going through motions. So we're all we're all in the same boat in that way is that if you're, if you're not at it, um, you're not in. And then if, if you're out, you need to, to work your socks off to try to get in. Filippo Givagnoli, you're very welcome. You're in Moldova ready for another Europa League game. So how have plans gone? And I'm sure you guys are all set for hopefully another big League of Ireland night in Europe tomorrow night. Yes, yes, we are. It was a, it was a good trip here. We are all set here in the hotel. And uh, tonight we're going to have the last practice before the big venue tomorrow. But uh, we are ready. We are ready and, and uh, we prepare the game. For you, Filippo, you've been in the job now for a number of weeks. You've had an FAI Cup win over Cove. You've had a league win over Shelburne. And you had the European game last week with another European game tomorrow. How have you enjoyed your first few weeks in charge? And I suppose particularly in terms of Europe, preparing the team to play in, in big European matches, I'm sure is something you're very much enjoying. No, oh, Yes, for sure. I really enjoy to work with this group. The players were amazing with us, amazing attitude. Uh, willing to learn every day and uh, to explore, you know, different way to, I mean, to train eventually for them. Um, of course, we didn't invent the wheel. I always say that, um, but maybe it's a different approach. And I think they are curious to, to, to learn, to improve. And this is the best, the best part of the job. When you have a group of people that are, you know, they are curious, they want to work, they want to learn, even if I have, players that they are already champions uh, but this doesn't change anything their their approach with us made the difference for sure and you had the european game last week filippo in andorra a 1-0 victory that ridiculous red card for andy boyle made things so difficult in the second half so i'm sure when the final whistle was blown you guys were just so happy to be true because things were made so much more difficult after that red card no, yes, you're completely right. Uh, a game that you know we were controlling uh, and became became something difficult. But this, I think, uh, is the represent the international matches, right? Europe you never know what's happening. Uh, issues are everywhere. 
and the uh, uh, opponents are focused, they perform, it doesn't matter the level because it's always, you know, playing Europe is give you more focus. Um, so I think we learned something and we came back with something in our pocket. We learned something about environment, about what can be that we learned that, you know, referees, they can make mistakes. They can, they can uh, give you some problem, not only the opponent. So I think after this game, we are, we are stronger. And, uh, and, and now we are ready to perform t tomorrow night for sure. Yeah, the match against Sheriff of Moldova, Filippo, they won their league 18 of the last 20 occasions as well. And I'm sure you would have liked to be able to send Shane Keegan to watch them in person. But with the way the virus is, it's all, all the analysis is now being done on video and on Wise Scout, etc. What do you know about them and how have you been able to prepare the team, given that you haven't actually been able to go and watch them in person because of what's going on in the world? No, yes, of course. All the scouts, they have to uh, use the video the video platform but we study them we we, we still we still look in them is is uh, is a, is a really good team and they have 21 international players and uh, really good individually for sure is a team that you know is really a rich club uh, and ambitious so we know what is the challenge so we will we will need to perform we will need to to give our best performer without doubt and uh, but we will do I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that we will perform a high level in 2016 Dundalk made it to the group stages of this competition one of the most famous European runs in the history of the league I know there's one more round to go if you get through the rounds tomorrow I'm sure you're aware and the people of Dundalk have explained to you the stories from 2016 and, and I'm sure that's an ambition of everybody if you can get through this round to try and go as far as you can and, and make it all the way to the group stage in this competition? No, yes. I hear the story, everything, but I, I'm trying to stay focused in the task because, you know, everything can, can affect you in the good and in the bad. So the best thing for me is to stay focused on what I have in front. So right now I have this game and I have to prepare this game. And then you guys are in charge to talk about history and stuff. I have just to be focused on, on the job. or uh, I don't want and nothing is affecting us, me, the players, and any, anybody else. Filippo, thank you. The best of luck. Thank you, Jamie. Thank Thanks you so much. Best of luck. Thank you.